When Yahushua came some 2,000 years ago, he came as a humble servant. His purpose was to not only become the Lamb of Yahuwah that takes away the sins of the world, but he also brought restoration to the Father's name by making Hashem known. He set the perfect example of how believers ought to live. Yahushua loved us so much that he literally and freely laid down his life for his friends. Like all bridegrooms, he left to go prepare a place for his bride. He miraculously ascended to Yahuwah. Since Yahushua is the high priest he entered into the Kodesh place once, making atonement for the sins of the people, this includes you and me. When this was done, he rightly sat down at the right hand of Yahuwah, making interception for his bride. And, immediately after the distress of those days, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give its light, and the stars shall fall from the heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then the sign of the son of Adam shall appear in the heaven, and then, all the tribes of the earth shall mourn, and they shall see the son of Adam, coming on the clouds of the heaven with power and much esteem. Matthew chapter 24, verses 29 through 30. Upon the scheduled appearance of the imposter showing up at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet and the sixth bow, earth will go through a cleansing cycle of unimaginable terror. As the dragon makes the final inquisition against the bride of Yahushua a sea of blood will follow. The body of Messiah who have truly comprehended what it means to literally, and freely lay down our lives, becoming a living sacrifice, will have picked up our staffs following after Yahushua. We, the few and humble will bear witness to the truth. Most of us, will most likely become martyrs. Scriptures reveal to us that Yahuwah is zealous for his people as outlined in Joel chapter 2 verse 18. When his doomsday clock reaches the final breaking point, and the cup of abomination begins to overflow, he will have enough. The seventh seal will be opened. The seventh bowl poured out on this wicked earth age. The seventh messenger will sound, and there will be loud voices in the heaven, saying, The reign of this world has become the reign of our master, and of his messiah and he shall reign forever and ever, as outlined in Revelation 11.15. And I saw a messenger coming down from the heaven, having the key to the pit of the deep and a great chain in his hand. And he seized the dragon, the serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years, and he threw him into the pit of the deep, and shut him up, and set a seal on him, so that he should lead the nations no more astray until the thousand years were ended. And after that, he has to be released for a little while. Revelation chapter 20 verses 1 through 3. Since Yahuwah created nature, he will use nature to bring about his wrath. The earth will be ripe as explained in Revelation chapter 14 verses 15 through 20. His wrath will be unleashed upon the wicked. The Kodesh ones will not be harmed by the mighty one of Israel's wrath. No mad scientists, not even her will be able to manipulate the coming cataclysmic events. This will be major worldwide destruction. Do not forget that Yahushua said my kingdom is not of this world. Meaning this earth age. Therefore this present earth age will be changed as we will also, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Upon the second coming of Yahushua I truly believe there may be a pull shift. Scriptures give us strong clues as to this remarkable event. And heaven departed like a scroll being rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. And the sovereigns of the earth, and the great ones, and the rich ones, and the commanders, and the mighty, and every slave and every free one, hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him sitting on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, because the great day of his wrath has come, and who is able to stand? Revelation 6 14-17 The scriptures do seem to describe a pole shift occurring right at the second coming of Yahushua HaMashiach. Were you aware the government has been building underground facilities and bunkers to hide in? They have been stockpiling food, water, medication and even seeds. They think this will save them.
In the event of a pole shift, the earth will be turned upside down. Consider the following words of the prophet Yeshilahu, Isaiah, The earth shall stagger like a drunkard, and it shall totter like a hut, and its transgression shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. Yeshilahu, Isaiah 24 20. Now consider the following about the earth's axis tilt, this is how it should be and this is what the Earth's axis looked like a few years ago. Entering these last days, we are seeing the signs in the sky. Man can manipulate the weather to bring about chaos, or to try to slow down the effects of the pole shifting all they want. I believe it is inevitable to happen at the return of the Messiah. And there shall be signs in the sun, and moon, and stars, and on the earth anxiety of nations, in bewilderment at the roaring of the sea, and agitation, man fainting from fear and the expectation of what is coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then they shall see the son of Adam coming in a cloud with power and much esteem. And when these matters begin to take place, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. Luke chapter 21 verses 25 through 28. The oldest lie was spoken by that serpent to Hawa, and the serpent said to the woman, You shall certainly not die. Genesis 3-4 This is why, thousands upon thousands have fallen for the false teaching called, the rapture. They think they will be spared death. Let's face it, many do not want to die. That is against the scriptures, though. For it is written, For the wages of sin is death, but the favorable gift of Elohim is everlasting life and Messiah Yahushua our Master. Even the believers who overcome the great distress and remain at the last trumpet will still have to give up this flesh body. And this I say, brothers, that flesh and blood is unable to inherit the reign of Elohim, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. See, I speak a secret to you, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this, corruptible has to put on incorruption, and this mortal to put on immortality. And when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall come to be the word that has been written, death is swallowed up and overcoming. O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your overcoming?